Number 59. The following sequence of reactions occur in the commercial production of aqueous nitric acid. And then we have three balanced equations with three individual steps and their corresponding delta H values, so their enthalpy values. We want to determine the total energy change for the production of one mole of aqueous nitric acid by this process. Okie dokie. All right, so Hess's law. Basically, when I see a bunch of equations with delta H values, I, I, the first thing I think of is Hess's law. This is going to kind of be fun. Kind of. It's going to be fun because it's basically like a puzzle. All right. So the first thing is, is that we just are looking for, you know, how much energy is going to occur when one mole of the aqueous nitric acid is. Now, nitric acid, remember, guys, is the HNO3. HNO3 is always nitric acid. And that's produced in the third step. So think of this as like step number one, step number two, and then step number three. So we have to go in progression until we finally get our nitric acid, our HNO3, out. So the first step that happens is this step. Four NH3s plus five O2s will come together and we'll make four NOs plus six H2Os. So let's write that down. So I'm going to say four... NH3s plus 5O2s yield 4NOs plus 6H2Os. In this case, I don't care about the states, guys, because it's going to get a little hairy. But just know that, you know, the states per compound or molecule are the same. So, like, all the O2s are gases, okay? All the waters are liquids, so you don't have to worry about changing states or anything like that. Now, in order for this... Uh, equation to be run, or this this happens, right? The delta H for this is a negative 907 kilojoules. Okay, now, in order to go on to the next step, we have to basically get rid of our intermediate. Now, what is an intermediate? An intermediate is always something that is produced in the first reaction, and then we'll get rid of in the second reaction. Basically, an intermediate will be found first on the product side, so basically on the product side here, and then it will be immediately shown up again on the reactant side of the second step. So, can you tell me what compound shows up on the product side and then shows up again on the, on the, the reactant side on the second step? Yeah, it's NO, right? NO in this case, would be an intermediate. And intermediates from step one to two, they never show up. They should be completely taken away, right? So we have to balance it. We made four NOs. That means we got to get rid of four NOs in the next step. But uh-oh, there's only two here. So now this is the beauty of Hess's law. We can multiply equations by a number so that we satisfy how much we need. In this case, we need four NOs. So if I if I maybe write down my second my second thing here, right? Two NOs plus O2 yields two NO2, and that delta H is a negative 113 kilojoules, right? If I made four NOs, I have to get rid of all of them. What am I going to multiply to get to four for the NOs, right? They have to be the same. And yeah, you got it. I'm going to multiply by two. And we've done this before, right? In which we just have to multiply all of the, uh, the coefficients. You got to be fair. But here's another thing. If you multiply an equation, you also have to multiply the delta H value as well. So this whole thing has to be multiplied by two as well. So let's change it up. So I'm going to times two, and maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just put like two times here, right? And I'm going to change all the coefficients. So in this case, it won't be two NOs anymore. It will be four. There was one O2, but now one times two is two. And then two times two, I now have, whoop, four NOs. Okay. Now let's just quickly find out what the, uh, oh my goodness, 
what two times this number is, right? It's negative 226. So I'm just going to erase this. Negative 113 uh, is negative 226. And maybe I'll just bring this over here. Beautiful. Now we're going to add these together, right? Step one and two coming together so I can get rid of that NO. And things that are on, the, on opposite sides, they cancel. So the 4NO, which is on the product side, will get rid of the 4NO that's on the reactant side. So let's see, I have four NH3s now. So four NH3s plus, now here's the thing. You see how I have O2 on the same side? When you have the same compound or molecule on the same side, that's addition. So five plus two is now I have a total of seven O2s. And this will all yield four NO2s and six H2Os. And now we have a new delta H value. Just like we added these up, you gotta add the delta H's up. So negative 907 plus negative 226. So I get a negative 1133 kilojoules. And that's where we stand as of right now. So what I can do is I can basically get rid of all of this math. And this is the new formula that we're going to be working with. So pause the video if you need to write this down, but I'm just going to get rid of all this. And bye-bye. This is the new formula that I'm working with. So I'll put this up here. Okay, so step one is done. Step two is done. So the only thing I have left now is to go to this formula and now introduce step number three. So step number three was three NO2s plus H2O, and that yields two HNO3, so we're finally getting there, plus NO. And that delta H was a negative 139 kilojoules. Okay, so the same exact idea. We got to get rid of the intermediates. And remember, the intermediate will show up on the, uh, the, products, uh, the product side, and then it will show up again on the reactant side. But now here's the thing, guys, right? I have NO2, NO2, and H2O, and H2O. Chances are it's going to be the NO2s that are going to be the intermediate and not the H2Os, mainly because did you see how in the second step we produced this as the only product and then we completely got rid of it in the third step. So that's why focus on the N2s, the four and the three over the water. All right. So let's see. I have four NO2s. I have three NO2s. I want to get rid of them completely. So what am I going to do? I got to multiply, right? What's the number? That's the next number between four and three by multiplication. It's 12. What I can do is I can multiply this whole equation by 3, and I have to multiply this whole equation by 4. And then they'll match, so I can get rid of them. But remember, if you do that, you have to multiply the delta H values. So this whole delta H is getting multiplied by 3, and this whole delta H is getting multiplied by 4. Let's just change the numbers first. So I'm going to take 3, and I'm going to just times each coefficient to change them up, right? And then the same thing for the four, for the bottom here, right? So let's just start with the top. I'm gonna get rid of this and this, and then let's see. So three times four, now I have 12, and maybe I'll put this in a different color. I have 12 NH3s. Three times seven is now 14. So I'm gonna get rid of that, that's 14 O2s. Three times four is now 12 again, and then 3 times 6 is 18, so that gets rid of that. Let's just do the bottoms. I'm going to do 4 times all the coefficients. So 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 1 is just a 4, so I'm just going to put a 4 here. 4 times 2 is 8. And then four times one, I'm just going to put a four here. There you go. 
And now I just got to multiply these numbers. So the first one I'm multiplying by three, the second one I'm going to multiply by four. So before I erase it, let's just do it. Negative one, one, three, three times three. I get negative three, three, nine, nine. So this would be negative three, three, nine, nine kilojoules. So I can get rid of all this. Beautiful. And then negative one, three, nine times four, I get five, five, six. Okay, beauty. So negative five, five, six is going in here now. And now I used up all my three equations. So now the last thing I got to do is I just got to add the two together. Let's see, does anything cancel out? Yeah, the 12 NO2s are going to cancel. Right there on opposite sides. So by and by. I can cancel out some of the waters. You see how I have four H2Os? And maybe I'll do this in a different color just to show the difference. I got four H2Os and I have 18 H2Os. So just simplify by subtraction. If I use up all these four H2Os, how many is left? 18 minus 4, right? Which is 16. So I have 16 H2Os left. And nothing else that I can cancel. So my final equation would be 12 NH3 plus 14O2 yields 8 HNO3 plus 4NO plus 16 H2O. And now my delta H value has to be added up as well. So 3399 plus 556, negative 3,955 kilojoules. Okay. And technically this should be kilojoules per mole. Okay, guys? Maybe I'll just bring this a little bit over because I'm kind of squeezing over here. So... For simplicity of the video, I'm going to get rid of all this math, so just pause it because we just need to do one more thing if you need to just write it down, all right? And now, all that's left is answer the question. We did the hard part, guys. That one was hard. Now they just want to know what's the energy change if I had one mole of aqueous HNO3. In this case, I have eight moles, so I need to change that. So... For this case, put down what you're starting with, right? So in this case, it's one mole of HNO3. That's what we want to know. And now that's why we found out this number, because this is the ratio that's going to get us from kilojoules to moles or moles to kilojoules. So times by a ratio, put the mole of HNO3 on the bottom and put the kilojoules up on the top. In this case, it's going to be negative 3955 kilojoules for how many moles, right? What's the number that goes down here? Is it going to be a 1? Well, this depends. We're looking for HNO3, so you put the coefficient of what it is for HNO3. So it would be 8 moles of HNO3. But if I was looking for like NO, I would put a 4 down here. So it's going to change. So just be careful, guys, okay? Cancel this out. And basically what we just have to do is just 3955 divided by 8. And I got 494.4. There's a negative here, and this is now kilojoules. Now, maybe since they only gave me three sig figs in the beginning and they didn't give me any decimals, maybe we'll just say 394. But I'll just keep it as 394.4. 394, it's, you know... It's whatever your teacher prefers, okay? Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. At the moment, we also have physics and math videos. So if you're studying for physics or, or if you're in a math class, maybe we could help you out. But sometimes we might be able to help you out with, you know, uh, standardized tests like the MCAT or maybe AP. So go check it out, all right? Thank you so much, and I'll see you in future lessons. Take care. Bye-bye.